Hello and welcome to our Createch UK showcase, where creativity meets technology. I'm Janet Hull, your host for the UK Creative Industries Council. It's a joint forum between UK government and industry, and together we represent the interests of all 10 of these creative specialisms. We also work with the UK digital industries because our creative industries are increasingly interconnected and tech enabled. They are a force to be reckoned with when you put the two of them together. So Create Tech UK is what we call the place where technology and creativity meet. This is a technical term that the investment community use to describe it. As you can see, allowing customers to better manage operations, processes and product by applying specialized software and algorithms that are used on computers, consoles, smartphones and other connected devices. We like to talk about it as where creativity meets technology. And we use these two circles to represent the different types of businesses that work within it. So create tech, pure play, new companies, startups and scale ups. Creative companies who are getting more and more tech savvy and tech platforms which are becoming more and more innovative in creating applications for the creative industries to use and develop. Creator UK is a force to be reckoned with, a nascent part of the economy set for further growth over the next decade. It's already raised over $5 billion worth of venture capital investment in the last 10 years and attracted almost $80 million of leverage funding from UK research and innovation for over 600 projects in the last three years. It's an exciting time to be part of Createch. And today, representing Createch, we have three companies, each from a different part of that ecosystem. From the creative side, a UK-founded creative advertising agency, BCCP, represented by Julian Douglas. From the tech side, who better than Facebook, who have set up in the UK a major R&D and innovation operation to serve the whole of EMEA, here represented by Caitlin Ryan of Creative Shop. And in the centre, a Createch Pure Play UK company founded 10 years ago by entrepreneur and visionary Sol Rogers. Over to you, Sol, to get us started. Hi, my name is Sol Rogers. I'm the founder and CEO of Rewind, an immersive specialist based here in London and Los Angeles. And thank you so much, Janet, for having me here today to talk about how the create tech industry is so fundamentally important to the future of the British economy. So Rewind itself has been focused on one thing for the, for its in, from its inception. Firstly, bringing the physical and digital world closer together and mainly to drive spatial experiences that people love and are meaningful to them across entertainment, education, enterprise and beyond. Along that path, we've won all kinds of awards all over the world, but also I've been asked to chair BAFTA's Immersive Advisory Group to help the British Academy understand how immersive technologies can assist the filmmaking process, and also chair Immerse UK, a British government-funded innovate project to spread the use of technologies far and wide beyond its traditional use cases. So why is Creatix so important? And I, I believe it's for one thing, it's driving the next industrial revolution. Steam and mechanization moves to electro electricity and mass production, which moves on to computing and IT and automation. And the fourth industrial revolution, for those that don't know about it, is happening right now. We're using AI and intelligence, we're using IoT and networks, and we are bringing together something new, cyber physical, the blending of the physical and the digital universe hand in hand to allow people to experience things in new ways. And those new experiences are for new audiences, but also to allow us to transform traditional audiences and engage with them in new ways. We were already on that path, but COVID absolutely has accelerated that process and we're seeing it happen all around us. If we just look back at what 2020 did, we have new audiences looking at streaming in different ways. We have audiences wanting to engage in different ways. They want it to be on demand. They want it to be interactive. They need it to be personalized to them and they've got to have it connected and always on. The idea of a linear TV station is very passe. And also the, where that content is consumed can be anywhere from, you know, in the back of a moving vehicle to on a train to in your back garden to anywhere in between. We've seen this happen out through 2020. Uh, Finland held on their national day and in an immersive reality content that invited the entire country to it. 700,000 attendees 
uh, came to this event and saw the performers, the guests and the speakers in a real time engine driven in an environment that allowed them to enhance it beyond the physical. We also had um, Travis Scott perform in Fortnite, which is a first person shooter game. And what happened with that is that 14 million concurrent players came together to experience this performance in a way that was enhanced beyond anything that could happen in the real world. And Lil Nas performed in Roblox, traditionally a children's game that anyone could create any content in, and they performed within it to all the audiences across the world. Um, and Valencia uh, al instead of holding their future of fashion performance, their catwalk, did the entire thing in a game engine as well, volumetrically capturing all of their uh, clothing range and their models and allowing anyone to attend a catwalk in a futuristic environment. And finally, we just had recently announced as part of Sony's keynote, um, a new immersive uh, department. They launched with one title driven by uh, Madison Beer's performance, where they allowed her to perform in a completely digital twin of the Sony Music Hall and a completely hyper-realistic version of her character, performing for audiences all around the world, and it's coming out next month. And also the social media platforms themselves are getting into this. Not only did we have in TikTok the weekend performing in AR, but Snapchat is now allowing us all to paint the world with colors and paintbrushes that actually layer onto an AR version of reality and allows us to see touches of where we're going. For us, it's about core things. Put the audience first and understand how they want to be communicated with. And these spatial experiences need to be wrapped around with four key things. Real-time engines and technology that allows it to act in real time. Social interaction and multiplayer where you feel present with other users. It needs to be data enabled, so it's driven by performance and artists, but also the real world that it comes from. And it has to be accessible across any platform, across any media. People need to be able to engage with it. And what you get is to three main areas of contact. Connected characters, avatars that we're perform represented as, but also digital performers that are brought into that space. Connected spaces, attending uh, theatres, sporting arenas, retail, but also connected content, educational entertainment that I feel part of and present and engaged with. And all of that is driven by main technologies. 5G is accelerating the speed of those networks. Pixel streaming is allow us, allowing accessibility across any platform. And edge computing accelerates the power and quality of those to things never been seen before. For us, those touch points allowed us to create Weaver, an esports broadcast platform that allows anyone to uh, see their favorite esports tournament across any platform. Also to put people's experiences in the back of moving autonomous vehicles to allow us to transfer you back in time with the Bride of Frankenstein or with O2 to allow us to bring Michael Bublé as an encore performance to anybody's mobile phone. The Weaver platform was phenomenal to be part of and was actually funded by the British government and which absolutely supports the creative industry. Innovate invested into a consortium of businesses to allow us to move at pace, to see how far we could push esports. And the tournament organizers got involved too. This platform allows anybody in the world to be at an esports tournament, no matter where it is, but also have it brought to them in a narrative which is absolutely hyper-personalized to you. Imagine the commentator at a football match that spoke to you about the players that only you love. That's exactly what's happening here. And what we get from all of these technologies is really building the bedrock and the foundation of the metaverse. As I said a moment ago about the fourth industrial resolution being cyber physical, the metaverse is that. We are allowing this digital twin of everything that we currently have and we're enhancing it where we're not bound by the laws of physics or wherever we may be are in the world. This is a way for us to go past the pressures and the crisis of COVID and allow us to move forward into a new space where anyone in the world can interact with, engage with anyone else. And really the thing we need for that is creative technology or the create tech industry. Thank you so much. Hi everyone. Thanks, Sol. That was super interesting. Uh, my name's Caitlin Ryan, as um, Janet said, and I'm the EMEA Regional Director for Creative Shop. And what that means is I lead a team across EMEA of creatives, technologists, uh, strategists, and we're looking at um, how brands and businesses best connect with people on our platforms and everything from uh, Facebook and Instagram right through to Oculus. Um, we work with Spark AR and that's some of the work I'm going 
to show you today. But what I thought would be interesting is to have a look at how brands are thinking about uh, working, co-creating with creators. So obviously, traditionally, lots of brands, especially on Instagram, have worked with um, kind of the, the mega influencers, the ones who have huge audiences, and they speak in a tone of voice that's very, very relevant to their audience that they've built up. And while we still see that, obviously, I thought what would be interesting today is to show you something we've seen, particularly during COVID, uh, a new way of thinking about co-creating with uh, with creators. So this example was from Sephora and they came to us uh, pretty early on in, um, in lockdown because of the problem that most brands and businesses came with us, they could no longer produce on set. So they wanted to think about how they could um, get around that. But also they were really keen to launch a fragrance, not using the stereotypical images um, that lots of fragrant advertising falls into, the very kind of highly sexualized stereotypical typing of women, uh, the idea of fragrance um, being for the enjoyment of somebody else rather than the enjoyment, sensorial enjoyment to yourself. So that was the brief to us. And we talked to them about working with not maybe some of the big creators, but actually thinking in a more um, broad way about the range of creators that are out there um, on Instagram. So we pulled together a list and you can see here the different kind of buckets or topics that we looked at. And and this is, is kind of the world of creators is so quirky and diverse and weird and wonderful. And you can really put together for your clients a very interesting pitch list of different types of creators. As I say, some of them don't have large followings, but they are really exploring very interesting creative spaces um, in their sector. We ended up working with um, Jess Harrington, who is a neuroscientist AR visual creator. So um, as I said, it can get quite quite niche. She th really explores the idea between uh, sensorial and um, how neuroscience can be adapted into a, an AR filter experience. You see some of her work here, which is simply stunning. We partnered her with um, another creator that we selected, um, a designer, extraordinary designer, 3D designer called Roman Bracci. And as you see here, again, he explores this idea of how to create um, organic spaces and visual uh, kind of movement on, on our platforms. So again, do you see how some of the work, and it's, as you can see, it's very organic, and that was the kind of thing we wanted to capture. So we introduced uh, Jess and uh, Roman together and they co-collaborated co on this work. And here you can see the resulting work, which was so beautiful, um, both creating filters for the um, people to be able to download and, and use in the organic feed, but also in paid advertising, using the filter and these organic 3D uh, special effects to really make this um, fragrance launch stand out. It was an incredible success. And what was interesting is we tested this against a business as usual, a kind of much more conventional approach uh, to the advertising. And there's a six point lift on the effectiveness of this advertising compared to what you would usually have run. So we're seeing this again and again. We're really exploring it, how uh, using creators can really, um, and especially, as I say, these niche creators can really change the way brands reach out and connect with audiences. But of course, there's always uh, the, the mega influencers, people like Kylie Minogue, who have huge audiences on our platform. So Kylie came to us when during COVID, she wanted to launch her 15th album, disco album, and she wanted something very special for her audience. Um, as I say, she has a huge following and they're very passionate about her. And what we wanted to play with is this idea of performance. How do you create the performance uh, experience that you have if you go to a Kylie concert? So it was an Instagram first working with um, an avatar of Kylie uh, where she uh, is recreated as a um, an avatar in AR so that you could have um, a dance with Kylie for 24 hours only. And that was what was interesting about this piece of work. It was how we could um, create that exclusivity. Um, once once it's gone, it's gone forever. Um, that, and we really are playing with that a lot um, on the internet and thinking about that from a creative point of view.
As you can see, it went crazy for the 24 hours everywhere. It was, um, Carly was dancing all over the world from New York, uh, in kitchens in London, in Sydney, everywhere. And, um, and the, the buzz it created because of this is very exclusive, but beautifully rendered and wonderful experience. Um, I think it's something that we're going to see more of and something, you know, I say as, um, as creative shop, we're really interested in. So I leave you with that really to think broadly around creating in the future with technology, not just about reach um, and size of audience, but being able to create this very authentic experience uh, with the creators that you that you choose and thinking about, um, you know, performances and what makes a performance in real life uh, so extraordinary can also be replicated on our platform. Thank you. Thanks, Caitlin. Hello, my name's Julian Douglas, and I'm the Vice Chairman of VCCP, a fully integrated creative company that uses technology to deliver for our clients. We are the challenger agency for challenger brands. We exist to transform the fortunes of our clients by challenging and disrupting the categories they operate in. It's why our logo is a small girl squaring up to a big bear. We were founded in London in 2002, and we're a top five agency in the UK with offices in eight different locations around the world. We're 1,500 people working together all over the world, united by our challenger spirit. We're curious, creative people who like to ask questions, to challenge each other and our clients. We challenge salad thinking. Our mantra is it only works if it all works, and we believe Every interaction is an opportunity for transformation. We always start with a customer and insight sits at the heart of everything we do. In communication, we provide brand strategy, creative and production across all channels and right across the conversion funnel. In distribution, we plan and buy across owned, earned and paid media. And the fastest growing area of our business is customer experience where using technology, we design, build and manage digital and physical experiences in addition to product and service design. We work with multinational and national clients across a number of sectors, but one brand I'd like to focus on is our founding client, O2 Telefonica. We've worked with them since 2001, over 19 years. Right back in 2001, Mobile phones were changing the way people live their lives. Someone once said in a research group, I would rather lose my house keys or my wallet than my phone. And this inspired O2 into identifying as being essential for life. Hence its name, Oxygen, or O2. And O2 was a brand born customer first. It was all about personal enablement and believed the possibilities of technology should be open to all. Over the past 20 years, O2's role in people's lives has evolved and expanded as technology has advanced. It's a business that's constantly reinventing itself while staying true to who it is. And so too, our role at VCCP has evolved in the ways we drive growth and unlock value for O2. Today, we're creating work to tackle one of the biggest challenges for a telecoms network. The fact that it's invisible, intangible, and so entirely undifferentiated from its competitors at face value. That's why we've created Bubble, a robot, a virtual embodiment of the O2 network that is there to help people whenever and wherever. To drive customer engagement, we launched the first ever robot dance on TikTok with the O2 Bubble Dance Duet competition. Total views have now exceeded 1.5 billion and TikTok confirmed it's the first time ever that they've launched a hashtag challenge utilizing branded video content that's not from an influencer. And this approach is something they're now recommending to brands moving forward globally. So where next for O2 and VCCP? Welcome to the 5G generation. This new technology gives everybody a better, faster and more reliable connection in extra busy places delay-free downloads and buffer-free streaming. Technology, it pushes us forwards. It 
helps us write history. And it has long empowered generation after generation. It enables us to see more, hear more, and do more from anywhere. And it's brought us closer than ever before. It turns musicians into rock stars. Dreamers into inventors. And anyone into a leader. Now, what this generation will be known for, the good we will do, and what we'll leave behind is in our hands. Welcome to the fifth generation, 5G on O2. O2 has partnered with broadcasters, the Digital TV Group, and Digital Catapult to secure UK government funding as part of 5G Create to build a 5G mobile based platform to broadcast events in stadiums and other venues. 5G will push the boundaries in entertainment, esports, and gaming, but it's 5G's impact on the world around us that's even more exciting. This technology has the power to connect buildings, transport, and services in ways you've never seen, completely revolutionizing everything from the way traffic flows on our roads to the way we receive healthcare. To realize these opportunities, we've had to grow in number to attract and develop people with new skill sets within the agency. This has meant looking beyond the usual sources of talent, focusing efforts on continuous training to build deep partnerships with other tech companies. So the agency is much bigger and much more diverse as we work to stay at the intersection of creativity and technology. Thanks team. Thanks so much. For Createc, Saul Rogers, Rewind. For Creative, Julian Douglas, VCCP. And for Tech, Caitlin Ryan from Facebook. I hope our showcase has whetted your appetite to find out much more about UK Createc. And I wanted to let you know that at the expo here, run by uh, UK Department of International Trade, are our Createc ones to watch. Each year, the Creative Industries Council puts out a call for nominations for companies who the UK industry feel are really beginning to shape the future of Createc. Of the 100 in 2020, six are exhibiting AI Music, Charisma, Factory 42, Good Loop, Latimer Group and Rewind. Please do get to know them. Give them a call. Go see them. And if you want to stay involved in our conversation, and we hope you will, to find out more about our programme, the new research coming out, and our next call for the 2021 Createch Ones to Watch, do look at our website, thecreativeindustries.co.uk. Do follow us on Twitter or join us on LinkedIn. We'd love to continue the dialogue and we're very keen on more international collaboration. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you.